and they're ready to surrender. आईएनए के बागी फौजियों पर अंग्रेज देशद्रोह का मुकदमा चलाएंगे। उन तीनों के बचने के चांसेस कम हैं। ये कोई आम केस नहीं, कोर्ट मार्शल है। बोला भाई एक केस आप कांग्रेस के लिए नहीं, सुभाष बोस के लिए लड़ी। लुटेनेंट गोबाक सिंह डिलन, कैप्टन शाह नवाज खान, कैप्टन पी के सेगा, सेक्शन 41, वेजिंग वॉर अगेंस्ट द किंग you are charged with murder. Do you plead guilty to the charges read out? If there is a force to fight for the freedom of freedom, then its name is Azad Hind Fawj. The safety, honor, and welfare of your country comes first, always. British Indian Army hand you over to the Japanese Imperial Army. Hindustan and the Angrezes were broken down and broken. If something is up and down, the country will kill the country. Now, the people will not leave any English. At night, you will stop the freedom of your freedom. The English officers have not given us our freedom. So, what can they be able to do our freedom? Today, the Hindustani forces have their own purpose. Hindustan's freedom! You give me the blood. I will give you the freedom. ये मुकदमा पूरी इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी का है क्योंकि हमने वो दिन देखा है जब हमें ऐसा लगा था कि हमने हिंदुस्तान को वाकई आजाद कर दिया देश की आजादी की लड़ाई कोर्ट में लड़ी जा रही है और इस वक्त पूरा देश एक साथ तैनात है This trial and its judgment shall be remembered throughout history. Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shura and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the collection of statistics, Amendment Bill 2017. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mr. Manoj Gupta. Director, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation and Brigadier B. D. Mishra, defense expert. Now for the highlights. The Collection of Statistics Amendment Bill 2017 extends the provision to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Nodal officers to coordinate supervised statistical activities. The bill plugs a legal vacuum as both centre and state laws do not enable collection of statistical data on certain subjects in the union list. The Collection of Statistics Amendment Bill 2017 provides for extending the provisions of the Collection of Statistics Law to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. As of now, due to the gap in the legal framework, collection of statistics relating to subjects like citizenship, education, banking, labor and forests are not happening, which makes the planning of development work difficult for the government. The Collection of Statistics Act 2008 was enacted by the Parliament to facilitate the collection of statistics on economic, social, demographic, scientific and environmental aspects. The law extends to the whole country except the state of Jammu and Kashmir due to the special status it has under the constitution. The Jammu and Kashmir state legislature had also enacted the Jammu and Kashmir Collection of Statistics Act 2010 which extends to the whole state but this has not been able to serve the purpose. The fact that you don't need statistics, you need information, that is you need to have an informed decision when you make policy. You can't make policy without knowing what's on the ground. So from that point of view, yes, it is a legislation which is aimed at getting that information. It does have stringent provisions. Um, it does extend the jurisdiction of the central government into the state. So you have those implications. But from the, if the aim is eventually to get the information, then why not? The bill enables the central government or the state government to designate one of its officers as a nodal officer for the purpose of statistic collection. 
the key duties of the nodal officer will contribute and supervise statistical activities in the central government or the state government wherever he is designated the nodal officer will be expected to coordinate data collection activities and provide consultation to government departments to avoid unnecessary duplication of data he holds whatever is decided it is decided on the basis of statistics and by including jammu and kashmir it will get its due share in uh, all the various central schemes which are there uh, on the basis of its um, uh, proportional uh, need the designation of the nodal officers is expected to result in effective coordination of data collection and formulation of statistics the bill was introduced by the minister of statistics and program implementation mr d v sadanand gowda in the lok sabha on march 20th 2017 The Collection of Statistics Amendment Bill 2017 deals with the collection of statistic information from various areas. Through the bill, the center is trying to expand its jurisdiction within the state. Nishtha Malhotra with cameraman Raj Shakur for Rajya Sabha Television. Jammu and Kashmir has a special status under the constitution and the only state which has its own constitution. How is the bill going to impact this status? I'll come to you straight away uh Mr Gupta you have been involved in drafting the entire bill at various stages yeah so was this challenge a uh, a challenge at all because it has a special status and uh, status and uh, the residents of jammu and kashmir are very apprehensive about any such uh, extension of center's power into the state of jammu and kashmir now in view of this was this a challenge while you were drafting or while you were involved in the process of drafting this bill no in fact it was not a very challenging because uh, it whatever the amendment we are bringing that has not as, uh, related with the article 370 370 mm -hmm. is totally different thing whatever we are doing that is totally different thing how is it different i mean uh, because uh, in the parliament when this was being discussed there were concerns voiced by certain members of parliament so is that a genuine concern or not see uh, collection of statistics 2008 uh, that has been uh, that that is in the force right now that is extend to the whole of india except the jammu and kashmir due to its special provision provided under article 317 but uh, actually uh, see uh, there is also uh, jammu and kashmir application to the jammu and kashmir constitution order 1954 there are something uh, this uh, jammu and kashmir there is also jammu and kashmir collection of statistics 2010 10. so jammu and kashmir collection of statistics act 2010 that is that is uh, that is uh, effective only for the state government for the state subject mm -hmm. so our act cannot be and uh, there is also one proviso uh, in uh, article 3 of the jammu and kashmir collection of statistics 2008 2010 that bars the state governments to issue any direction for the collection of statistics under the central list in the jammu and kashmir ah. so that is why because see uh, our act cannot extend to the jammu and kashmir correct and uh, even if we want to take the help of the jammu and kashmir collection of statistics act 2010 that there is already a proviso that uh, be, uh, that uh, that they cannot uh, give it to you yeah 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 so, so there was this gap that is why there was a gap and that is why because uh, 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 there is a gap and in order to meet bridge that gaps so we have introduced uh, that uh, uh, amendment bill and that has been passed by the lok sabha and that is due in the rajya sabha uh, brigadier mishra uh, i come to you on this uh, aspect this has been i mean six decades have gone by right and this was one of the most important i mean aspects of governance in that state the center should have done this way way back before i mean way way uh, before but why do you think the center avoided this well before i answer your question <clears throat> i want to put this entire issue on a larger canvas and we take the constitution now the constitution <coughs> so if you can stick to this point sir so uh, because we've got very limited okay, time okay, you address okay, this point okay, the okay, way i okay. asked you uh, actually it is amazing in 2008 the uh, the uh, bill which was passed by the parliament 
in that they were aware and they knew that there is a requirement of having all the states on the same spectrum. I, the base, uh, the dat database should be available for all states. I do not know in what wisdom they did not do it. And then in 2010, when it was uh, enacted in the almost same form by the legislative uh, assembly of the JNK, they excluded all these things. Now, <clears throat> there are very, very important issues in concurrent list and central list. Concurrent list. You take from, uh, you know, uh, uh, item 15 to item 27. All those are so important for the state. Now, those are not covered. There is a big gap. So, I think, I think <clears throat> either there was, a, 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 you know, a extra constitutional consideration beyond the beyond the requirement as to what the legislator what what the legislator should do what are those considerations if i think i think it uh, simple i think it's simple perhaps it was a political consideration do not what was that political consideration and, and that that was that don't uh, don't rock the boat don't rock the boat because perhaps the vote bank politics were there and this is why it was not done. I am very certain about it because if the government of today, they find and the government says that, I am uh, quoting, it does not affect the individuals of the state and it does not give the arbitrary power to central government. That consideration was then also in 2008. Correct. correct why correct. they didn't do it? My point is, sir, my point uh, to you is, I mean, these considerations override the two points that you were earlier making that are listed in the pre uh, preamble. Integrity and... Uh, integri Unity and integrity of the nation. nation. Secondly, we the people. Correct. We so the people. Why, we start from, that is the starting point. No, no, we the people. No, no. What I'm asking you, sir, is that you mean to say the earlier governments, for their own vested interests, did not think it proper to continue with the idea of unity and integrity. Yes, yes. I, I, and when the debate was taking place in Lok Sabha, uh, <coughs> let me name Asududdin Oasi, he said that the brute majority in Lok Sabha of the present, present uh, ruling party, they are, they are bulldozing their way through. Now, is it, is this, is it, if that is the consideration, then I think it's 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 a parochial, it's got parameter which is not in the interest of the people, and yeah. I think the today today what is happening in the country today the Kashmir uh, you know anywhere they say look we want uh, independence we want this and that I think uh, okay I'll get Mr. Uh, Gupta in sir very quickly sir on this there are two aspects which you need to address. First of all, it extends the jurisdic jurisdiction over Jammu Kashmir, the center, especially relating to unions list and con concurrent list, only limited to collection of statistics, right? These subjects, some of the important subjects are citizenship, education, banking, labor, and forest, right? Yeah. This is the data that the union wants. Second, they also want a nodal agent to be, a uh, nodal agency to be appointed, either by the center or by the state whoever does it, to monitor this kind of a collection of statistics. Third, there was a provision in 2008 which ensured that the data collected was only to be used by the government for uh, planning and certain specific purposes. That has been done away with. Now, the new provision says that as the government may find fit, which enlarges the scope of use of the data, that is collected there. Do you think in view of these three things, the citizens of Jammu Kashmir need to be worried? No, no, there is no need to and uh, no need to worry the citizens about the Jammu and Kashmir at all. Because see, uh, our concern is only for statistical purposes. So as I explained earlier, because the, you know, for effective pl planning, we, need, we require uh, uh, very quality statistics and quality of information. So that is why actually, uh, if we are having a good quality of statistics, then certainly that are going to have the good planning for the people of the states and uh, the, in long term and uh, that will help to the people of Kashmir. Right, sir. Uh, I want uh, sir, just a second. Time for us to head into a break. When we return, we will talk about the other provisions of the bill.
The collection of Statistics Amendment Bill 2017 plugs a legal vacuum as both center and state laws are not applicable to statistical subjects falling in the union list. The statistical subjects like citizenship, education, banking, labor and forest cannot be obtained as per existing laws. In the existing law, any information that was provided to the statistic officer will be used for only statistical purposes. The bill removes this provision and empowers center to make rules to determine the manner in which such information can be used. The proper implementation of the bill will help the policy makers to understand issues and make better policy addressing issues according to ground reality. I don't see any difficulty about uh, what uh, they want to do, they can if they amend it, but after they amend, they will have to amend the Jammu and Kashmir uh, State Act also, they will have to amend because that does not provide. So this will take care of the Indian constitution, which now will apply, these provisions will apply. But they, they, Jammu and Kashmir will have to also make the necessary amendment. The, the difficulty is more political, and psychological. The Collection of Statistic Law 2008 covers collection of data from industrial commercial concerns, individuals and households. Law empowers government to appoint a statistic officer at local level for collection of data, oral interviews and filling of returns electronically. The law provides for fine up to 5000 rupees in cases where the informant fails to furnish information or refuses to supply the particulars required for him. Jammu and Kashmir does have a special status and that's the reason if you see the st statement and uh, of the objects of this particular statute, there was a 1954 order which precluded uh, parliament from legislating on this particular area. Unless there's an enabling constitutional provision which today gives par parliament that power, parliament lacks the competence. Having said that, if you examine the state enactment on statistics, it also excludes from its scope uh, the matter specified in List 1. The Collection of Statistics Amendment Bill 2017 seeks to strengthen the data collection mechanism in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, overcoming the Constitution Order of 1954. The concurrent jurisdiction that is to be exercised by the central government in the state of Jammu and Kashmir has not been provided in the central legislation. Therefore, the amendment in the law is intended to address this vacuum as well. Experts believe that we do need to have the information whether it is Jammu and Kashmir or any other part of the country. It has political implication but very marginally. Nishtha Malhotra with cameraman Raj Thakur for Rajya Sabha Television. What is required to enable the government at the centre to get regular data from the state of Jammu and Kashmir for it to plan developmental projects? My question to you, Mr. Gupta, is uh, e, let's suppose this bill is approved by the parliament. Whether it has power or not, we are not going into it, as it was earlier mentioned. But let's assume that the parliament has the authority and goes ahead and amends it. Will the state have to then go on and amend it further in their own laws for it to be implemented there. That is what I want to understand. Yeah, I, th I don't think that uh, they will go because there is no conflict of interest there. Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, our act, we are not going for the uh, state subjects. We okay. are going only for the union and uh, central list and the concurrent <coughs> list. Oh, so you are... So already there is space, uh, <laughs> we, we are not touching the Jammu jurisdictions of the Jammu and Kashmir collection of statistics act and that act, that act will be applicable for the state subject even after the this amendment of this act. Okay, so what you are saying is yeah. that the assumption that uh, once it is done here, the amendments are brought in and jurisdiction extended to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, the state government in Jammu and Kashmir need not, yeah. I mean, legislate on it yeah. or approve of it. It is directly going to be extended to Jam Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir, yeah. yeah. So, it's a unilateral thing. No, oh, I don't know in what, what countries you are taking uni unilateral. For the collection of statistics, 
uh, under the union list and the concurrent list this act we can collect the data in jammu and kashmir after, after, after this enabling provision yes and, sir you were going to add one sir. thing more that yeah. because right now we are also collecting some of the statistics under jammu and kashmir uh, act, see whole of the india for rest of the india we are collecting the act uh, statistics under jammu and kashmir jammu and uh, this collection of statistics at 2008 but for the uh, for the some survey in the jammu and kashmir we are taking the help of the jammu and kashmir collection of statistics statistics act in that uh, is uh, in that uh, state in jammu and kashmir mm -hmm. but after enactment of after uh, this when this act is passed by the parliament our central agencies and ministry department of the central government we there is no need to take the help of the jammu and kashmir directly we can implement just like in any other part of the india okay one, uh, uh, one last question sir yeah. that i want to you to address there is also a 5000 rupee fine yeah if any citizen in the state does not Sir, this is applicable to whole of India, including Jammu and Kashmir. It is not specific for the Jammu and Kashmir. So, it is applicable. This act, see, uh, if you go to the backgrounds of this act. So, earlier we had actually uh, collection of statistics act 1953. See, that was the very old and uh, there was a very legal and meager, uh, meager uh, penalty provision that was around 500 rupees something. So, because nowadays uh, these non-response cases are also uh, just growing on. So what happens, our officers, they go to the field, they voluntarily, if suppose they ask some information, that people are reluctant. If sometimes they also come to know cases, uh, their penalty provision is also very less, then they, are, they also don't bother. So that is why when we enacted 2008, collection of statistics 2008, we made some stringent provisions so that we can have an, there may be some deterrent effect on the respondent point of views and we can get timely statistics from them. Okay, my question to you, sir, is let's suppose this is done. What are the advantages that will accrue to that state? One. And what are the advantages that they have not been able to access because of this? Both the sides of it. Let, let me first tell you, yeah, you are, you, are, uh, you are wanting to know the gap which is existing. Gap is disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And if the gap is bridged, it is advantage. Now, let me give you one very simple example, the gap. Now, <laughs> religious census data is controversial there. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you the controversy. The controversy is that <clears throat> from 1981 to 2011, the Muslims from 64.19% increased to 68.31%. Now, <clears throat> The Hindus from 32.24% uh, came, uh, came down to 28.43%. Now, the study was that there were 1.68 lakh uh, Hindus. Then, the problem was that there were only 9.34% women. I understand, Brigadier Mishra. I, B I, Brigadier now, Mishra, see, now what are... is happening, what is happening, that, you know, there is a political and attitudinal problem there. There. And this political attitude on problem, somebody is contesting one way and the other person is contesting the other, the other way. way. Now, when the gap is removed, now this problem will not arise. One. And the second point is that, let us say, unemployment. Now, here, unemployment comes, employment comes under concurrent list. Correct. It is, it is not there. Mm -hmm. Now, if that data is not available, if government is going to give let us say 5,000 crores for employment provisions to a, con uh, to a state where employment is, let us say, 30%. And if the data is not there for JNK, how much will the allocation be? Let us say another thing. Okay. I, I'll come I to armed forces. Yes, yes, yes. I'll come to armed forces. Yeah. In armed forces, there is a recruitment provision. Mm -hmm. Every state has got to have. I don't have SETA. Only army alone. So if the, if the army recruitment is going on, where do I know? How does army know? Yeah. Now, you know, the army there in JNK, in Valley, they organize rallies and there are thousands and thousands of people. And the vacancy, as per our data, is only this much. Uh, now, those people, they are, are being deprived. deprived. Yes, they are deprived. So, if there, I mean, they, and you know what is happening? There is serious need. No, let me tell you. And they are suffering, the youth is suffering due to political and attitudinal constraints. Got it. Sir. That is what will go. Right. 
Moving on, my colleague Nishta Malhotra spoke to Lieutenant General Kadia and former Deputy Chief of Army Staff and tried to get his point of view. Sir, given the special status to Jammu and Kashmir, do you think it will create complications? Article 370 provides special autonomous status to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, which means that legally India can have control only on the defense policy, on the foreign policy, and on the communication. For any other subject, if the parliament wants to pass, it has to be agreed to by the state assembly. So, why is it important for Jammu and Kashmir to be brought under the ambit of this law? There is a demand and I think there is a justification that we remove this article. We are now 70 years down the line, history keeps changing. We remove that article and let J&K amalgamate fully into Indian state as all other states. Uh, our 28 states are. So that is the status. Thank you, sir, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.